There's something behind the walls that we're not seeing or we're not hearing. I just don't think he has it anymore. Should any team want Carmelo Anthony? Yes, sir, Carmelo! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Control the Narrative, a podcast where we control the narrative that the media creates. If you're new around here, subscribe to catch our weekly podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And if you're a Turner, a subscriber, or better yet, a Control the Narrative member like this fine gentleman is coming on the show tonight, um, we appreciate the members a little bit more, but we appreciate all of you guys. It's been a few weeks. We are in this weird, similar situation that we were in back in 2018-19 when Carmelo Anthony was not on the team. Um, it's almost Christmas. We're recording this on December 19th, and he's still not on the team. And it's kind of deja vu. It's kind of like, I can't believe we're back at this um, stage, at this situation, at at all this shit again. And um, it's crazy. The reason we're recording this podcast is because there was some like semi-recent news that came out, which we'll get into in a minute. But just want to have some shit to talk about. I don't want to keep coming on here and speculating about this team or that team or this team or that team because... He just makes sense, Carmelo Anthony, makes sense on so many teams that it's like, let's just not even play this, like, speculation game. Let's just come with facts, information, quotes, and take it from there. So, we have a very special guest always, uh, but special guest in the sense that he has, and we always joke about this. If you've seen a few episodes with this guy on here, uh, we joke about this a lot, but his quality has always been up there in terms of, like, he looks like he's the host. And uh, this episode, more than ever, I'd like to welcome to the show, Kenny. Welcome back, brother. What's up, bro? So as you can see, if you're watching this shit on on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, just at least come over to the YouTube just to check it out because this dude has his favorite jerseys up. He's got the Christmas Day jersey from 10 years ago up uh, well on him. So this guy fresh to death, man. So good to have you back, man. And uh, fire fucking setup as always. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. You know I had, you know I had my my, my marketing team, man. Shana, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like she comes up with stuff. Do yeah. this, do this, and it just always comes together, man. Man, look at this shit, man. He was Kenny was texting me. He's like, yo, I just got this, and he has a light. And then I was like, good shit. It's like, yo, I got a mic. I was like, good shit. He's got a little rack for his jerseys now, so. Man, my shit, I think my shit is all right. Like, my girl. Yeah, man, you look good, especially the pictures, man. I got to get my picture game up, man. (laughs) But the jerseys are fire in the back, too, so good shit, man. Um, Let's let's get into this topic because it's something that we haven't heard from Melo in a long time. And what I'm going to do is something that I don't really do that 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 often on here, um, which is sharing my screen and letting you guys listen into an interview um, we're going to hear what Melo said when they asked him, what are your aspirations for the NBA? Are you still trying to come back into the league? And then we'll talk about it. So real quick, check this out. This was last week at Cayenne and Bronny's basketball game when Melo and LeBron were in attendance. Malika Andrews from ESPN asked Carmelo, do you want to be in the league? Pretty much. And this is what he said. Lastly, Carmelo, today is all about Cayenne, but I have to ask, what are your aspirations in terms of the NBA right now? I want to be, you know, I, I, I love the game. I, I will say that. I love the game, but I realize there's a lot of things that's not in my control. So I just sit back and let it play out, and whatever it's going to be, it's going to be, and I, I accept that. I'm at peace with that. I'm cool. I get to watch my kids. I get to watch my kids. I get to watch my son play, you know, train him, be around him, come to his games. So these are the things that, you know, for a long time I haven't had a chance to do. So now I can I can be that father and the man that I need to be. So I'm cool, man. I, I, I would love to play. Uh, I love the game. I'm still in the gym every single day. Um, but the opportunity presents itself, it presents itself. But it's not something that I'm, you know, I'm pressing about. It. You know, I, I still love it. You know, I still love the game. So that was it. Obviously, a shit ton to unpack right there. But, Kenny, I'm just going to throw it over to you. Obviously, hearing that, we know that it is not Melo's decision at this point to not be in the NBA. So when you hear that, what do you think? What goes through your mind? And just like overall, how did we get back to this point? It's, it's, I don't know. There's something behind the walls that we're not seeing or we're not hearing. 
like I've been seeing certain reports they're going by age, uh, they're going by the deep, they're still harping on the defensive thing. Yeah. Everybody's quicker now, the pace has changed. But I'm like, I don't understand how the pace has changed if everybody's shooting three pointers. There's nobody really driving. This like the game is so perimeter based now, like it's crazy. When you have centers that don't go down to the block, like yeah. there's not a true center in the league. Like, like you can't, I, I don't, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of one that's like a true center that stays down low. Maybe eight. That's that's only because he got Chris Paul and his team to, you know, generate that. But yep. it's everybody's perimeter based. And beat in Philly, he comes down, he tries to bring the ball up, and he comes down, brings the ball up. He's shooting the three, so it's like. I, I don't understand him. Yeah, Jokic, Jokic, but he does he does a whole bunch of different things too. Yeah, he does. I mean, he he's on the block, but that's about it. It's like it's a handful of guys. Like you can't name like one, but the Dwight Howard to the league, like they used to be. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody else. You had, uh, I mean, Bam, but Steve and Bam, he comes in and out. So yep. it's like there's no like Hakeem, David Robinson, Shaq, like those type of centers, man. Like just. Straight, dominant, down low, give them the box, stay off the block, let them do what they do. So it's like the game, there's, there's not a lot of defense played. I mean, if you ask me, you got maybe Giannis, you got LeBron, you got AD. That's like, you know, Paul George, of course, and Kawhi. But there's not a lot of people that's like a lot of teams that's just straight defensive, like how San Antonio used to be. Like they Forget were both sides of the ball. Players. Players. Yeah, there's like, like a handful the, of them. Right, there's no like lockdown, true lockdown defenders like Kobe was. Like, lock you down. Give me the best player. I'm playing defense on them. Like, there's not a lot of that. It's pound the ball as much as you can. Try to cross over, get a highlight. Like this, the league is not the same. So I just don't understand it, man. I, I, there's something else, and it's not like he's looking for 28 million like he was when he's playing before. It's not like you got to give him a huge contract. So I, I just don't know, man. There's something. Behind the walls that we're not here, that we do not see. But I, I kind of think it's going to come down to like the playoffs. Somebody needs a veteran to come in and help them out, like leadership, or they have like something to help the team get over that hump in the playoffs. I think that's might when that's what it might come down to. That's what yeah. I think. We'll get into like how he gets signed in a minute. Yeah. But, but you may you made one point that I think is one of uh, one great point of like a lot of things I was going to say is when we look at the checklist, he's not asking for a lot of money. Like you said, he's been signing for vet men's for the last, what, three, four years, yeah. ever since Houston. Uh, so maybe even five, let me see Houston, Portland, Portland, and LA. So four years, he's not asking for a lot of money. He's not asking for a lot of play time. So those two things, he's not asking for a featured role. Um, he's not asking to start. So once you start crossing all these things off, it really has you feeling clueless. They tried the, yo, he won't come off the bench narrative. He did that. They tried the, yo, he's too old. He can't be effective. Last year, in terms of uh, efficiency field goal percentage, was the highest of his career. So they, they tried that. That doesn't work. He still has it offensively. They, th they tried the defense things. The defensive, he can't play defense, and he's too slow and all this shit. And then when I put numbers out there, I'm like, yo, look at his defensive win share. Look at his warp. Look at this. Look at that. They're like, no, 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 watch the game. I'm like, I'm, that's what I do. I was just giving you guys the numbers for the calculator boys. And then when I show highlights, uh, that's only one highlight. So it's like everything that they said this dude couldn't do, especially over the last three years, he's done that and more. He's taken back seats. He's taken bench rolls. He's taken pretty much no money. He's sacrificed in every sort of way. So when we talk about like reacting to that video, it's upsetting as a fan. Obviously, like we all want to see him play. Like we're all fans of him. And like for me personally, like he's a big reason I really like got to that next level of fandom at the NBA and basketball and shit like that. And this is kind of sucking all the energy out of it because it's like, damn, bro, like what is the reason? And there's not a reason. It's like, all right, cool. Then how do we get here? For me, there's no one, like you said, there's something going on behind the scenes that we aren't aware of, like for sure. But for me, when I think about how do we get to this point, I think it goes back to why he got out of the league in the first place. And again, we made a whole fucking documentary on it, so I'm not going to go through all that shit. But bottom line is that he stayed too mellow. 
the narratives that people started running with against him, yeah, he never combated. And like then he did on first take. And then he went out with Stephen A and he talked about all the shit in Houston and about this and about that. And like he combated it. And it seems like last year, the Jalen is it Jalen Green or Jalen Smith? Which which one is in Houston? Jalen Green. Jalen Green, okay. Jalen Smith is in Orlando then. So Jalen Green, when he said that thing, is like, yo, our game plan was to, to attack Melo. I feel like that was a really big moment because they were attacking Melo because he had five fouls, not because he couldn't play defense. And the media and the social media and um, all the memes and everything just took that shit and ran with it of like, oh, yo, just attack Melo and you'll be able to score. And that wasn't the case. And I'm making a post about this, but when we look at the numbers of that game, like he was one of the better defenders on that team, uh, percent uh, opponent field goal percentage wise in that game. So for me, I think that the New York thing was a very real thing that if the Knicks trade for Mitchell, I think we are talking about the Knicks right now. And we, we've been talking about the Knicks, but it didn't happen. And um, I think that that's what he was banking for. And after that, it was kind of just scramble mode. And it was almost a little too late for like him to try to find somewhere. So like we'll get into what happens next, but that's what I feel happened is he banked on the on this Nick shit. Like I've been saying for the past few weeks and even months, it didn't work out. He tried pivoting. There was really no landing spot for him. Like I feel like he almost didn't have a backup because like even Mitchell thought that shit was gonna happen. And mm-hmm. uh since then it's just like social media is running with these narratives of like, oh yeah, it's because he doesn't play defense and he's washed and all this shit and Man, I just feel like we're back where we were four fucking years ago. Yeah, man, it's it's sad too, man. Because it's like being a diehard Mellow fan. It's like you look forward to the seasons. Of course, like having that argument with people, like, no, no, yeah. I'm not trying to hear that. Y'all watched yeah. the game last night. He just dropped thirty on you now. Yeah. What you want to say now? Oh, he's washed. Now he's not washed. And you get that text message. Like, I plenty of time people. I'm oh, my bad, man. He's not washed. He's not washed. Like, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So now it's just like. I gotta follow somebody else. I gotta keep up with them. But it, it just it don't the feel the same. Sixers now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but don't worry. Yo, we're taking all the screenshots of all these comments and all these tweets and everything. And those apology forms are gonna be recirculated. Um, oh, yeah, hopefully sure. shortly. Hopefully shortly. Yeah. Yo, real quick, sorry to interrupt if you're watching on YouTube or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, but just wanted to let you know that we have merch at Control the Narrative, and it's uh, pretty fire, in my opinion. This is the Pixel Mellow t-shirt that I'm rocking. Anything from Cuse Mellow to New York Mellow, Hoodie Mellow. On this shirt, we got Scapegoat merch. We got Black Ball merch. We got just regular Control merch. Um, shop CTRLTheNarrative.com. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, beanies, stickers. Shop CTRLTheNarrative.com. I think I got my point across. Go check it out. I bet you you'll find something you like. Appreciate the support as well. Obviously, you know, the merch sales help us fund these podcast episodes that we get to record every single week. So appreciate you um, and back to the show. All right. So we're at this point right now. It sucks shit. Like the shit is not fun. And like, again, deja vu. It was like, cool. Maybe if he signs by opening night, maybe if he signs by... Uh, when he signed with Portland, which I think was like November 14th, maybe if he signs by Thanksgiving, and now we're less than a week away from Christmas, and I'm just like, fuck, man, like, what needs to happen? So, in your opinion, based on everything you know right now, um, what do you think has to happen? And, like, I know you quickly touched on it before, but what do you think has to happen for Carmelo Anthony to get signed and to see him back on the court? I think in the NBA. Like, they got to really, like, look at it as they're going to give him a shot or – he can truly help him. It's like now it's, it's kind of like the Portland situation, how like the team was like down to pretty much their last yeah. like players and roster spots and stuff like that, and they needed somebody to fill in. That's that I think it's the same Portland situation again. It's got to be like a team that that's down. They down bodies and they they need somebody that can come in and help them like right away, or they need a, a veteran. Like that's that's pretty much the only way I see it happening. Like. Somebody has to give him a shot. That's that's the only. Even if you yeah. like, or maybe you go to like a, a practice with somebody and you know beat beat somebody out, and show him like, look, I'm I'm still him. I mean, don't 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 sleep on me. 
don't forget my name now. That's yeah. that's the that's that's the only way I see it happening. Yeah. It's sad to say, but that's because everybody's looking at age, but nobody looks at the physical part of it. Like you can be forty years old and still be in shape like a twenty five year old. You know that. that Especially him because of how he plays. Yeah. It's not like right. he's LeBron where he's going up and dunking everything. Right, right. <laughs> Nobody still can stop the turnaround fadeaway. Yep. Post up, inside and out, jump mid range. Like, come on. Yeah. He still can do all that at 38. So I, I really think it's going to come down to a Portland situation where it's like a team desperately needs somebody or somebody like, you know what? Let's just give him a shot. Like, let's see if he can help us. Or, like I said, playoff time. It's like, all right, we need some, some depth on the bench that, or we need some scoring. Because, I mean, watching that Milwaukee game the other day when they got blown out by, what is it, 40? I was like, oh. Somebody else could have slid on, you know, help them out a little bit. Yep. Uh, same thing, the Clippers, like their second unit. Him and John Wall, they can do John Wall, Paul George, and Melo. Like, and they got a good, re- like, the rest of their team is great defensively. Right. And like, it's sort of be like John Wall, man, Melo. Um, and then uh, who's Morris, like, take his slot. And they, they have Covington. They just got a shit ton of wings over there. They got Powell. Yes, yes. That's the only thing, too. So I don't know, man. He yeah. still can help somebody, man. They just somebody's gotta give him a shot. Just the Sixers. They definitely could use Maury, bro. Maury. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing, man. Maury. The only thing. Yo, but is, they, is Elton use... Brand still the GM? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I know he liked Melo when yeah, he so saw was, him in Portland and he was just like, fuck. That's the only thing, man. Yeah, that's fair, bro. Like, I was going to say one of two things. Pretty much, like, similar to what you what you were saying. It's like, some team has to get desperate. And I think the only way something like that happens is, like, a major injury. And, like, obviously not wishing that whatsoever. But, like, if a guy like Porzingis were to go down in, yeah. with, in, in Washington and miss a few months, and they're like, damn, we need, like, a forward who can score, I think. And, again, the Wizards are not very good. So, like, not saying, oh, Melo should go there, but like he grew up in Baltimore near the uh, DC area and shit like that. So that might make sense. But like, I feel like that in the, in the short term is the only thing that in my opinion would make a team be like, all right, cool. Like let's reach out to Melo. The other thing, which I think is more likely, and I really, 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 really hope I'm wrong on this, but I feel like after the trade deadline. Yeah. is going to be a really interesting time because Either teams aren't going to get someone that they want or um, not make any trades at all or get desperate, like you just said. Like I feel like after the trade deadline that week or two in February, and I, and I know they moved it up, so it could be the end of January. Um, but either way, yeah, it's, it's in February, um, February 9th, 2023, so right before All-Star Weekend. I think that's going to be a really interesting time. And again, I hope we don't fucking <laughs> – I hope we don't get to that point, but um, – that is where a team might be like, damn, all right, cool. We're desperate. We didn't get this guy. We need more offense or like we didn't make the moves we wanted to make or we made a move for a defensive guy, but we had to give up offense. So now we need to get offense f- from somewhere else off the bench. I feel like that is a place that if worse comes to worse, and like we're sitting here on February 19th or January 19th, still talking about this shit that, is going to be like it for me. I, I feel like once the playoffs and not like, all right, yo, I'm calling it quits. But like, I feel like if he's not signed a week or two after the trade deadline, then shit really is a wrap. Because at this point in his career, I don't think he would take a year off and be like, all right, cool. Fuck it. Let me, let me try again next year. Yeah. Um, unless it's like, you know, a one day thing with the Knicks where he's resigns just to like, retire. you know, retire with them. Or if like the Knicks decide late this season that like, yo, Melo come, if they already locked up a playoff spot or just like there's so many different ways that this can go, but a week or two after the deadline, if he's not on a team, then I'm like, yeah, shit's probably a wrap. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I, I agree with you. Yeah. So I feel like once the playoff time comes, comes like the playoffs are always weird because I feel like teams have to lock in their rosters by a certain date. And um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's weird with the playoffs. That's the only reason I didn't say that, but like, I think that made sense. And again, bro, the fact that we're sitting here on December 19th, like almost Christmas, talking about this shit is wild, especially like considering what he did last year for the Lakers. Yep. So 
Yep. <laughs> this shit sucks. And again, the Lakers were not the team that everybody thought they were going to be, but that was not due to Carmelo Anthony. He was one of the few players on that fucking team. Like, yep. count on one hand that showed up and, and did what they were supposed to do. So, trash, man. It's trash, and uh, it sucks that way. We've been talking about shit like this. But, again, all we can do is try to spread the truth and uh, stop this fucking meme culture from uh, doing what they did four years ago. And then hopefully in a month or two months or three months, we can start recirculating those fucking apology forms. Yep. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get those, those shits printed out, man. I'm going to be in Times yep. Square handing that shit out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, Kenny. So uh, last question before we get to the narrative, but, all right, last interruption, because if you're watching or listening to the podcast for this long, you probably fuck with us. And if you fuck with us, you'll probably fuck with all the perks that you get from being a Control the Narrative member, whether that's access to our invite-only Discord, where we're talking basketball all the time, or opportunities to join the next episode of Control. So whenever we need a guest, I go in our Discord, I say, yo, who's free? Who wants to hop on the next episode? And I pick from there. You get 20% off merch forever and then you also get member exclusive merch all by being a member tiers start at two dollars a month so if you fuck with us go check out a membership ctrlthenarrative.com and uh, i will see you in the discord all right back to the show for good the whole speculating on like yo this team or that team or this team or that team for me it's pointless because we don't know what their interest is we don't know what Melo's interest in them is now it feels like he's a little more open like entering the summer and free agency like we're like damn he probably wouldn't sign with the team like this team or that team or whatever but now it, it feels like he's probably more open so what i wanted to see from you is if you would call out one nba team that you think makes sense that they really need Melo, um for not making the call time in the first place, just which team do you want to call out? And I want to see if we have the same one. I don't think so, but curious. Miami. Why? They they need that shooting, man. Like they he definitely would have fit in with them offensively, man. Like that's that's scoring and that system I think is perfect for him. And do him and Jimmy Butler too. Like they cool, you know. They got hero and like, they they need shoot. They because come playoff time, they definitely gonna need it. And even mid range, supposed to yeah. mid range. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's and it takes some pressure off of Bam too. Yep. It's uh it's a team that we've all been talking about for months as like the team that objectively makes the most sense. Um, they're a great defensive team and need offense. So like, that's fair. I'm gonna go a different route though. I think the team that I'm calling out for not making the call to Melo, as far as we know, is a team that has been brought up, not like in real rumors, but by a lot of fans in the comments and on Twitter and shit like that. And I've always thought it made sense. I just never thought Melo would actually do it and go there. But the Dallas Mavericks. And I say that because of a few reasons. One, Max Kleba just went out with an injury, and he's going to be out like a month or two. So at the very least, Melo can be a stopgap. They play the same position, um, and Melo can be that stopgap for a month, two months, whatever. Show them what the fuck they have, and then they could kind of make a decision as to how many minutes he's going to get moving forward when Kleba comes back. Mm -hmm. But very similar role. And number two, which I think is um, more important, is Luka Doncic does pretty much everything by himself offensively. The way that they've built this team around him over the past few years is to put defenders around him and put spot-up shooting. They have a few playmakers, like Dinwiddie can playmake a little, Christian Wood can playmake a little, obviously Brunson last year, and, and guys like that who could always get their own shot, but their offense more than pretty much any team in the league besides maybe like Milwaukee, um, maybe the Lakers and like teams like that, is so reliant on Luka Doncic that he has to do everything from pass the ball to score to rebound um, to to steal the ball and, like, everything. And for them to have a guy on that roster who can legitimately be a number two option or at, at some nights a third or fourth option if Christian Will gets hot, if Dinwiddie gets hot, whatever the case is, but at the end of the day, just create shots 
and not put it all 150% on Luka, I think is really important. One, because it obviously helps them win more. And two, because they've really failed at surrounding Luka with the right talent. Like, obviously, I don't think they've even made it to the conference finals uh, since Luka's got there. I know they've, like, advanced a few times, but I don't think they've got... Oh, last year they won the fucking conference finals versus the Warriors. And I think that was the first time um, in Luka's career. So I just think it's it gets weird if they continue to get knocked out first, second, even third round, and, like, Luka starts getting a little frustrated, like he doesn't have help. Um, I think that gets interesting, and obviously we know what Melo can do offensively, and coming off the bench and putting up 15 points a game, 20 points if they give him the ball, and just being a guy that Luka can throw the ball to and be like, Melo, I'm going to take this offensive possession off, go get us a bucket, and he can do that, I think just makes so much sense. And I don't know why they haven't made that call, especially with Max Kleba going down. And again, as far as we know, we're no fucking insiders, but um, as far as we know, they have not called him because he would probably be on a roster right now. Um, I think Dallas makes a ton of sense right now. Uh, yeah, I can see him fitting in Dallas. And then also, like, they double team Luca to kick it out to him. Exactly. That open it up. You know, that exactly. open up the floor for him. That's more scoring. Yeah. And, and yeah, exact great point. To your point, it's like two ways. It's like, yo, he can get his own shot, but also we saw what he did last year in L.A. spotting up, so he yep. can do that too. And there's like spacing, so <clears throat> you fit him in there, then you got Luca. You also got you also got Tim Hardaway. That's true. So you got him. If you got him on one side, Melo on one side, Luca up top, and then you got Dinwiddie, and I'm missing somebody else. But like that's that's just that's spacing alone. It's like who you gonna guard? So I, I can see Dallas. Yeah, definitely see Dallas. And, and and again, man, I just feel like it almost feels like a Dwight Howard thing when they were in, when he was in Orlando, where it's like, yo, just surround the fucking guy with a bunch of shooters. Um, but like there wasn't real, and like Turk glue was nice. Like they yeah. had guys like him and Jameer Nelson. So like they had some good players. I'm not like don't shade at them at all, but like yeah, exactly. Rashard Lewis is fucking sniper. So they had guys who like can create their shot, their own shot, but. To just give Luca Mello. Yeah. I feel like it would be scary. I feel like it would be scary. I know they're like, you know, a 500 team this year. I know they're like pretty good defensively, but like, man, if they don't turn shit around for Luca soon, he seems like a guy who would obviously, I'm, I'm sure he would love to stay in Dallas if he could, but he seems like a guy who would prioritize winning over everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's my rant. Mark Cuban, if you're watching, control the narrative first of all thank you man let's get you on a pod and second of all we need to give Melo a call because luca could be out like it, it's like that black or white for me where if like yo they don't start to turn shit around quick in a year or two and they keep getting knocked out second round he could be out yeah so dallas is my team that i'm, I'm calling out because uh i just think it makes it's so much sense and like my girl is a is a maps fan so um, right, so that'd be perfect for you. Yeah, <laughs> she's a Mavs fan, so I could rock that uh, that seven jersey. That's a, she's, that's she's a win-win. Seven, seven. So uh, we'll see, man. But like, anytime I bring it up, she's like, "Yeah, yeah, you wish he could play for the Mavs, like, man." <laughs> right now, I, I wish he would play for anybody right now. So uh, just even put a uniform on, period. Just put exactly. a uniform on. <laughs> exactly, bro. Like, Practice jersey, <laughs> hoodie, or something. For real, man. And like, they just released that stay. You cop any of that stay mellow collection? Not yet. Yeah, that shit's fucking dumb expensive. I was thinking about like I was like, all right, maybe get a t shirt or a hoodie. Hoodie's like a hundred bucks and I'm like Yeah. yeah I'm I looked like at that. the joggers. How much are they? Like 80? eighty? Yeah, I figured. Um, so hopefully we see Mellow and like it's clean, it's clean as hell. Um yep. stay mellow dot com. Free plug, Mellow. We got you around here like that. <laughs> uh but ho- hopefully we see him out of those and in some sort of jersey to your point. Um in the near future. So Kenny, as always, man, a little bit of a shorter episode because, like, one, don't have too, too many things to talk about besides that one interview and also uh, just you and I tonight. Usually we have, like, fucking three or four people on here, so it's uh, a little longer. But either way, another great episode as always. But before I let you go, Kenny, you know how it goes. I'm going to allow you to control a narrative. It doesn't have to be mellow related. It doesn't have to be basketball related. It doesn't even have to be sports related. Um, so if you have one, I will give you the floor and let you control the narrative. 
it's not really controlling narrative. Just everybody enjoyed their family for the holidays. <laughs> you know, everybody enjoyed it Christmas holiday and spend some time with family. Take it in. You know, not a lot of people have family at this time. So, you know, enjoy your family while you still can. You know, thank and be thankful that you wake up every day. Beautiful. Controlling the holiday narrative. That's a that's a narrative. Because a lot of people take this shit for granted. Yes, indeed. A lot of people take this shit for granted. Like even for me, man, like obviously um being in New York, like most of my family's here. There's some in, in North Carolina and Boston and shit, but like um I don't know. It's like different when they all come to New York because like most of my family's here and shit. And like there are some times where like growing up you take this shit for granted and like I just wanted to be left in the alone, left alone in the corner with my fucking Game Boy, or like needed yeah, to get back yeah, to my Xbox yeah. and shit like yeah. that. So yeah, obviously you grow up, you're like, I, right, yo, I'm not gonna remember this fucking game in two months, let alone two years. But uh, that's a good one, man. It's it's gonna be um, another weird Christmas with Mellow not playing on Christmas. Um, yep. So I just I just go back to the days where he would play on Christmas and uh, the Knicks would always lose. <laughs> and every was, single year they lost that christmas when he was here so fun fact for christmas year every year that he released a shoe i was the only person in my store that bought it no way everybody else bought the lebron the katie or the kobe i always bought the mellow so you got the uh yeah another crazy quick story my friend i was after the m9 christmas the gray ones mm-hmm. for so long in a 10 and a half and i couldn't find them anywhere and i'm like bro like and this was like within the past couple of years. So uh, my friend found that shit for me and got them for me for Christmas like two years ago. I was like in fucking shock, like could not believe he found those shits and um, and brand new. It wasn't like they were beat or anything. But you got like I, re- I remember the M11s were man nice mm-hmm. the Christmas, the white, black and red. Yes, those are clean. I, I look for those on eBay once in a while. I can't find them. Really? I got you. Don't yeah. worry. I, I'll do the I got you. <laughs> you got a plug? I got you. Don't worry. I'll do some search. What were the... Oh, the M10s were the gray with, like, the green, right? Yeah, gray, gray with the green. Uh, yeah. They're actually... And the, the size are actually um, 3M. Yeah, I remember that. That gray is 3M. I remember that. I, I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan of those, but the M11s were nice. The M9s were nice. What were the 12s? Did they come out Christmas ones for the 12s, or were they just, like, the light blue ones? The twelves were the white with red on the side, because that's when they had the na- the royal blue jersey with the orange writing. Um, and OKC. No, he would. He had them. The um the M twelves were New York. New York. Yeah. Wait. wait so he they were the wore, one? OKC. He he did. He flip flopped. So he had. Got it. Um, no, the twelves. I'm thinking about the oh the twelves. I actually have. What 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 are the Christmas twelves? The, the Christmas ones. I were running to get them to you, but. I would actually have them. Maybe what I are they? Run again. Run what again. color? Just tell me. What, oh, are they the white and green? No. I what think only he had them. They never released. I don't think they released everywhere in stores. Got it. All right. It's all good. I, I white. They're really white. They're white gray. They were white gray and had a tint of blue. So it had like an icicle on it. So it was an icicle kind of look. And you got them? Yeah, I have them. Yeah. See, bro, Kenny, <laughs> when we bring you on here, bro, and you, you say things like this, and then you have that background, it's like, it confuses the viewers, man. It really confuses <laughs> the viewers. That's like, who the fuck's hosting this shit? Um, but we're, all right, give us, all right, let's end on this. This is kind of impromptu, but give us one of your, it doesn't have to be your most favorite, but like one of your most notable mellow Christmas stories of like you watching him on Christmas. Actually, it was, I was at my parents' house. I was, at, I was with my dad watching the game. And it was the game where he hit the two threes like back to back against and Boston. He, yeah, he was just like, "Man, you love this guy. Why do you love this guy, man?" And I was like, "It's mellow. Like, what do you mean?" <laughs> he, he's like, "You, you, you're a turncoat, man. You just a, you a bandwagon guy, man. So I'm not a bandwagon guy. I'm a mellow guy. That's that's, yeah. that's my guy." He was trying to see the still, and then it's like every time they would play the Sixers, me and him would just go at it. Every time they played the Sixers. You said so, you and your dad? Yeah, me and my dad. Because he's a diehard Sixers fan. Like I, I used to have to like the Sixers. I was I was a Sixers fan when I was in there. But after I just, my mother came in the league, that was over. Respect. Respect. That's a good one. I remember that. I think that was his first Christmas game with the Knicks. 
in yeah, 2011, yeah. right? Yeah. Because 2010, he was still in Denver. And then 2012, that was versus the Lakers. But for yeah. me, man, like, I don't think they won a Christmas. I think they won that game versus the Celtics in, in 11. But because I remember Melo going off. Yeah. But for me, when I just think of like Christmas and Melo and the Knicks and shit, it, it just always brought up bad memories because they would lose and like they always had the 12 o'clock slot so it was like yeah yo i would wake up and like rush to open my presents and go over to my cousin's house and like yo let's go let's watch the Knicks, baby and by 2 30 my christmas would be ruined and like, damn <laughs> that, that shit sucks so like i could pick from a bunch but when i think about just christmas and like how the knicks would ruin my christmas every single year <laughs> i always go back and like again i could pick from multiple years man but i i go back to the year that they played the Wizards mm-hmm. on Christmas and uh, Quincy AC and John Wall like got into like a weird fight where like Quincy AC threw like like a half punch but hit John Wall like with the inside of his elbow or some weird shit. Okay. And, and Melo had to like grab him and he pulled him to the side. And then um, Cole Aldrich was seen like as soon as they got into an argument, he just like went like this and just started walking away. And I'm like, this team is so fucked. This team is so <laughs> fucked. And uh, obviously they lost that game. But you had like dudes who were like just walking away yeah. from the um, from the game and from the fight. And it was just like, that's wild. So that shit sucked. Um, but anyway, yeah. I mean, I, I'd rather experience anything like that than like just not feel anything at all. <laughs> Right, watching NBA basketball. I see him on the screen at all. Exactly. You, the YouTube screen versus the TV exactly. screen. Man. Fucking exactly, man. So we'll see. Maybe uh, we'll get some sort of Christmas present, and this podcast is irrelevant in two days. And Melo signs with the team, then uh, yeah. we'll we'll probably have to hop back on and record ASAP. That's so fine. you, you uh, know I'm ready. <laughs> I, I'll come over to the background for you. I know you will. I know you will. So Kenny, my guy, as always, bro. Uh, appreciate you for coming on and and chopping it up and uh always like caring about the background and shit i know that the people who watch it on youtube um peep that and uh they've definitely seen that so i appreciate you man i hope you have a great christmas and holiday season um if we don't record a podcast soon and i hope that literally we record this and that tomorrow we get a notification and i'm like yo kenny let's go but yep if not man have a great christmas have a great new year and shit and uh Always fun. Great year of podcast with you, brother. Uh, I appreciate you having me on, man. I love doing this. I appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure, man. Stay mellow, baby. Yes, sir.